हेलो लेडीज एंड जेंटमैन वेलकम बैक टू एक्सोटिक एस्ट्रोलॉजी आई हैड स्टार्टेड द सीरीज ऑन प्लैनेट्स फ्रॉम आत्मकार का वी डिस्कस्ड द फर्स्ट वीडियो व्हिच वाज प्लैनेट्स इन सेकंड हाउस फ्रॉम द आत्मकार का बट आई आल्सो डिड दिस सीरीज फ्रॉम वीनस एंड आई सो मेनी पीपल बिकॉज़ मेनी ऑफ देम आर न्यू टू एस्ट्रोलॉजी सो दे आर नॉट एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड लाइक व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन a planet in third from the ascendant or fifth from the ascendant and uh, third or fifth from a particular planet okay so even now i am giving the disclaimer this is a bit of advanced astrology so uh, if you are very new to astrology you can still watch this video but uh, there are chances you may not understand so in case you feel you cannot understand though please go and watch my astrology basics videos there you will get a more understanding all right but today we are here to discuss what happens if there is a planet in third house from the atmakaraka okay not from the ascendant not from the first house from the atmakaraka so atmakaraka is the planet with the highest degree so wherever your atmakaraka is count three houses from there okay but let us first uh, understand what what is uh, the atmakaraka's uh, what is the third house from the atmakaraka so in the second house from the atmakaraka we saw that uh, the second house from the atmakaraka represents uh, people who are like family to us okay so they may or may not be our blood relatives but they are somebody who we very closely identify with and the second house from the ascendant shows our actual blood family okay so here what is the third house generally uh, from the ascendant the third house generally represents uh, our communication things that we like to give others uh, things that we like to talk talk to about others with others uh, things that we like to write about thing it's like short any anything short you know anything which happens within uh, 24 hours or 72 hours which means you go and you come back so short trip okay so that is like or within within a district within a state that is like the third house but if you are traveling to a different state so in india you are going from uh, punjab to west bengal or you know jammu and kashmir to kerala <coughs> so then uh, it's like your ninth house is activated and then from india if you are going to us or europe or canada then that is like your 12th house getting activated okay so uh, this is the third house from the ascendant and 9th house and 12th house we know that right but now the question is what is the third house from the atmakaraka so the atmakaraka shows uh, things uh, which our soul has been considerably attached to in the previous lifetime so it is but natural that the third house from the atmakaraka will show things which we inevitably want to discuss and we want to talk but either we are able to do that or not and to what extent well that will depend on the chart okay and that is why i have brought this example chart today and that is exactly what we are going to discuss today because uh, you can't just see the third house from the atmakaraka and just say oh the person will do good in this or that industry okay so we will see from a overall standpoint uh, we will systematically analyze this today all right so if you are new then please like comment share and subscribe to the channel and this video and hit the thumbs up at the end and if you want a consultation from me regarding your profession or marriage or health please go to my website down in the description section god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him so what's going on this is the example chart of a person who was born on 14th march 1979 uh, 1256 nagaur india all right this is the birth detail now first things first what do we where do we start from where is the starting point so when we are analyzing a chart we first see okay where is the ascendant okay so ascendant is again you see number 3 gemini you know this is the first house right so this means uh, communication is by default very important because gemini is the original third sign okay in the kalpurush kundli so that means the here the third house from the lagna is also very important the lagnesh is anyways important and the third house from the atmakaraka becomes even more important okay and the third lord is also equally important you will see this now so 
first thing we see okay what sign is there in the ascendant communication is very important for this person step one then what is the step two step two is to check where is the lagna lord which is mercury gemini is ruled by mercury so mercury is in the 10th house here you see this it's in the sign of pisces in debility okay it's nietzsche there now this is very interesting because Lagnesh in 10th and Mercury in 10th is fantastic, but debilitated Mercury, uh, not the best. So what does it mean? Does it mean that the power of Mercury will reduce? Uh, well, not necessarily. Uh, debility does not mean that the power reduces, but it means that the person's awareness is not very high in the initial uh, phases and the person has to work very hard. So debility can be cancelled if there is a good... Uh, there is a good guide or a good guru who can actually help us okay so but keeping the debility aside the lagnesh is in the 10th which means uh, phenomenal determination lagna lord in 10th very determined uh, to do anything in life okay not just career wise but in general the resolution is very strong okay it's not like new year resolution now Lagnesh is in the 10th. So profession and big resolutions are very important for this person. Although the person is not uh, very good at it initially, but the person wants to do it. Okay. Now, what is going on in the chart? Then you see where is the 10th Lord. 10th Lord. Why I'm saying 10th Lord? The dispositor of the Lagnesh. Okay. So the 10th Lord here is Jupiter. Jupiter is again exalted. There you see. So now Jupiter from the uh, second house from cancer is actually aspecting mercury okay with its ninth aspect so the debility of mercury is by default cancelled okay uh, because if the lord of the sign aspects a debilitated planet then the debility is cancelled okay it's not exactly like cancel but the debility gets mitigated okay so which means if some guru or some guide gives knowledge then this person will be able to make the right choices in life now because we are talking of the third house today so then we look at the third house so what is going on in the third house we see uh, we, we see there are two planets third house has two important planets and not in the best sign so we have rahu and saturn there so saturn rahu combination is known as shrapit dosh okay so now what is Shrapit Dosh? Shrapit Dosh does not mean that something bad is happening necessarily. It means there are certain things in your life which you have to do inevitably which is uh, beyond your control. So that is like a curse which means you know you have you might have to stay in a profession which you don't like you know because of money or you might have to stay in a marriage that you don't like you might have to be with somebody you don't like or you might have to in general do things in your life which you absolutely despise but you have no free will over it so <coughs> this is what it is like saying that there is a shrapi dosh now it's very interesting shrapi dosh is there in the third house so that means there is some inevitable communication which will be required or there could be some miscommunication third house uh Malefics can give miscommunication or a very adamant behavior during communication. You know, it's like lack of negotiation skills. Okay. But nonetheless, let's keep it aside. Then we come to the Atma Karaka here. So, who is the Atma Karaka? Planet with the highest degree. Sun 29 degrees. Can you see all these planets? They are less than 29. So, undoubtedly sun is the lord of the sun is actually the atma karaka and sun is interestingly also the lord of the third house do you see the third house is a very strong house here because it's gemini lagna then the atma karaka is lording the third house and ashrapit yoga that means there is something which the person has to do inevitably he has no free will over it this is a male's chart by the way <coughs> now what is going on surya is placed in the ninth house all right now interestingly surya is in the sign of detriment which is exactly opposite of his lordship okay in aquarius seven from aquarius is number five which is leo but nonetheless he is the third lord 
and he is placed in a ninth house which means his uh, the job or desire is to communicate something is to preach something is to convey something and this person is now sitting in the house of the guru which means this person will first have to learn from the guru and even here you see mercury is getting this niche bhanga from jupiter which means the person is learning something and then the person is overcoming uh, his weaknesses but now it gets further interesting if you see the third house from the sun from the atma gaga so sun is placed here one two in astrology we count the that same house as the first house as you know so this is the first house then this is the second house then this is the third house so who is there in the third house from the atma gaga well there are no planets okay this is very interesting because many a times you will find third house fourth house from venus atma karaka sun mars there are no planets but what does it mean so then you see if there are any other aspects okay so you see here what's going on is there any planet which is aspecting yes rahu is aspecting hmm rahu with his ninth aspect is aspecting the 11th house okay <coughs> then is there any other planet aspecting jupiter is not aspecting then what about moon moon is not aspecting what about saturn saturn is not aspecting what about mercury certainly not mars is aspecting the 12th house is also aspecting the 4th house is <coughs> aspecting the 3rd house but no more associations of the 11th house so that means rahu is aspecting there the third house from the atma karaka and rahu is also in himself in the third house and involved in the shrapit yoga okay now what is even more interesting is the lord of the third house from the atma karaka is mars again situated with the atma karaka here and ketu and sun which is like sun which is again the lord of the third house so very 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 strong connections with the third house you see there atma karakas uh, the third lord from the atma karaka is sitting with the atma karaka itself and atma karaka himself is the lord of the third from the ascendant so essentially for this person communication is extremely important so this person is actually a, a famous uh, preacher religious preacher okay a hindu preacher why because now if you go into the uh, life story uh, i i won't go much into it but uh, basically this person uh, was born in a very humble family and then this person had to like uh, work very hard to get to get into like the ashram and all this okay it was not very easy for this person <clears throat> why do i say not very easy because we sh we see this uh, shrapit yoga is there right so it, it is like saying the person is being pushed towards something but now the interesting thing is the person is now pushed towards this okay so doing some preaching some katha and all this but does it necessarily mean as i said you know if there is shrapit dosh does it necessarily mean that you are unhappy in life well certainly not in this case because we see that the atma karaka is with the uh, lord of the third house from atma karaka which is mars and the atma karaka himself is the third lord and mercury is mercury uh, giving any kind of opposition to this well certainly not mercury is like not in any other house mercury is in the 10th house which means mercury is telling okay whatever you want to do in life i will do it in a big scale okay and we see the person is blessed to have an exalted jupiter and if you see the degrees it is extremely uh, like it's a very 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 powerful jupiter you know five degree first pada pushya nakshatra right peak exaltation of jupiter extremely strong and jupiter is the 10th lord 10th lord in the second shows you have lot of resources and jupiter is also the lord of the 7th uh, house okay 7th house uh, lord in the second house so this is another very powerful combination for getting resources okay this means the people are coming and giving you their resources okay so 7th lord shows other people and second house shows resources so 
other people are coming and giving you their resources money contacts donation charity and all this okay and in midst of all this uh, what is going on in the chart if you see here moon is aspecting mercury so whenever moon mercury conjunction or mutual aspect is there you will always see there is some strong uh, affinity towards lord krishna okay apart from that uh, if you see uh, saturn and rahu they are aspecting the sun <coughs> this is not a very good thing and this person has had a very troubled childhood uh, with a lot of problems in the family and then this person somehow came out of the family okay what is even more interesting is the lord of the sixth house from the ascendant which is actually mars is again with the atma karaka and um, this person has no inclination for marriage which is also probable sometimes if the seventh lord is in exaltation because it means the person has full awareness about marriage you know it's like saying what is marriage you know what happens when you marry is there anything pleasurable in marriage is uh, do i need to marry again so the person is fully aware of something regarding marriage now that could be the person is aware regarding getting married or not getting married it could be either ways okay <clears throat> and because the sixth lord is in the ninth house so this person uh, has had been in a ashram like gurukul okay and ashram you know ashram is seen from the ninth house and also the sixth house because it is a place of austerity <clears throat> and we see uh, in the kendra uh, there are two natural benefits this is extremely uh, this is an extremely good uh, thing to have and also if you see moon is in the sign of virgo which is actually uh, again lauded by mercury so mercury communication uh, forced to, to do something because of the shrapit yoga uh, overcoming things by blessings of jupiter and also ketu is there you know ninth house so we see that uh, this chart is extremely strong all right for doing some kind of preaching activities and because the atma karaka is involved the person is actually doing something which he always wanted to do from many 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 lifetimes okay so this is by force but also by choice so it's like a combination of interest and destiny and free will all right very interesting chart of course there are other planets we can discuss we can discuss jupiter we can discuss venus you know so jupiter venus again mutual aspect you know sometimes uh, gives you no interest for marriage okay so we see there are multiple uh, indications <laughs> like people say oh my seventh lord is exalted will it be good for marriage well maybe good or maybe bad but maybe you don't want to marry okay so <laughs> that is also another thing so <clears throat> just because the seventh lord is exalted it does not mean that it is good for marriage okay so you have to see so here the sixth lord is very prominent because uh, it is with the atma karaka and surprisingly it is also the lord of the third from the atma karaka all right very 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 interesting chart very good person but a very troubled childhood a very difficult life okay and then of course what is important is this person got mangal mahadasha why mangal mahadasha because he is the third lord from the atma karaka so you see he was born on march 2000 uh, 1979 so so march 1991 this person was uh, 12 years and when this mangal dasha started he was in his 13th year okay <coughs> so if you if you consider that from the age of 13 to 20 okay this person it's like the peak of youth this person dedicated towards spirituality and then that thing made him completely okay and you see this moon dasha moon mercury thing uh, rega regarding lord krishna so you see this is uh, moon dasha started when he was like in his third year okay third year to 13th year so Uh, initial uh, uh, this devotion towards lord krishna came from his childhood you know especially his mother and father both of them especially but again i won't go into much unnecessary details about his childhood that's not important and relevant for today uh, because today's agenda was to show how incredibly uh, can we see if a person is doing something which he actually wants or he is doing something by force even if there is a saturn rahu conjunction okay and of course you can uh, go into the navamsha you can also see moon is um, there in the first house 
and uh, you can also see surya the atma garaka is in the fifth house so again something to do with mantra spirituality <coughs> and uh, yeah very 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 interesting and uh, you can draw more conclusions from this chart all right so i am interested to know what do you think uh, what kind of difficulties might this person uh, my he might have faced so please let me know and uh, one last request is please do not ask for this person's details name and all this i cannot reveal that is uh, not possible uh, that is beyond my capacity <coughs> Uh, but yeah this is for you to explain uh, for me to explain uh, how to understand what is a person going to do and is he doing something which he wants to do or is he doing something by force all right okay ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for your patience till now if you made it so far please subscribe to the channel if you haven't and hit the thumbs up and if you want a consultation from me, you will find my website down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will surely find him.